Welcome back, everybody, to the David Trey. Of course, our resident chef is in the building, Dev Chef, with Menu Monday. Chef, you got a lot of fruits out here today. What are we talking about? Hydration today. And, and, and really the way to get the hydration and the water into the kids, you know, um, if a kid doesn't play a lot of sports, they're not just going to run around drinking water. And water's expensive now. Mm -hmm. Fruit's expensive as well, but we're here to diversify. Well, you know, what I really appreciate is that fruit is some a way to do it in a fun way, right? Mm -hmm. Kids don't even realize they're getting hydrated with certain fruits. But there's a lot of fruits that contain a lot of water, right? Exactly. Like watermelon or like blueberries definitely a cantaloupe definitely a orange a lime you know what i'm saying a little umami grapes cherries high in fiber different style of grapes you know because kids like to have different varieties and also they could get educated on the fruit like a lot of kids, they know what mango is, but they don't know what it is when they see it. Mm -hmm. They know what it looks like in a bag when it's sweetened up and dried or something like that, or when it comes in, you know, dessert form or something of that nature. So, you know, we're just getting them more familiar with these things. And while they're eating them, enjoying it, we could explain to them pineapple, gray source of water, gray source of fiber that's going to help with their system. You know what I'm saying? So, like I just said, sometimes, you know, we got to make things work. We got a little bit of apple juice. We already know this is a high water content. This is one of the best things that you could get very next to some water. Oh, and you know, um, this also has allowed kids to play with the food. Mm -hmm. Cut this for me. We cut this. Cut this for me. Or we allow them to cut it for themselves. You know what I'm saying? Uh, they, they get to learn what it's like to possibly peel a grape. I don't I'm not into doing all that stuff because I know how tedious it could be. But kids, kids like to do that. So, you know, this is something that they could get to experiment with the food, make some mistakes, make some different cuts, because a lot of times with us, we don't have time to experiment and play with food. It's go time. Yeah. Right. This is how come we don't get to, you know, holidays. You better not make something that we're not used to. It's going to be a complete problem. <laughs> right. right. So this is the time to do these type of things. Maybe get something they're completely not used to. Like I could have really went exotic. I could have got dragon fruit and all type of stuff. But we just kept it basic for today. We got a cutting board out, a good sharp knife, because if you give it to them whole, this is the way you get them interested in cooking. They start off just dicing slicing cutting something then from there they want to cook it and do their own thing season it up make their own mm -hmm. make it their own thing mm -hmm. well you know the, the great thing about uh this time of year a lot of fruits are in season mm -hmm. so that's the best time to be going after fruits i mean we know that the the process right now has changed because they're trying to make them some some fruits that are seasonal they're trying to make them year round mm -hmm. but uh, you know i want to i want to mention something here is really special about um oranges you know it is, you know, the start of football season. I was just at the Jamboree, you know, yesterday, and a lot of parents carry tangerines. They carry oranges for the football players. This is something that they can utilize to replenish, not just for hydration, but also muscles, right? As they're out there on the field, this is something that's really specific to replenishing some of that muscle mass. Is that right? Definitely. I mean, the best way to get things to happen is to give them something that they want and something they like. And uh, orange tastes better when you're sweating and when you're a little parched, you know what I'm saying? It's almost like having a steak at that point. So when, a, as a matter of fact, when kids are being active is a really good time mm -hmm. to give them fruit because it's gonna quench their thirst. It's also gonna help, you know, uh, stop their hunger and whatnot. And, you know, like I said, Fruits a little expensive, but you're dealing with this isn't for one person. Mm -hmm. This is enough fruit for 10, 15 people. Mm -hmm. So it's a good investment. Yeah. And, you know, one thing, too, that I will say is you were talking about having fun with fruit. Uh, you know, some people love to mm. freeze the grapes right like yes. that's like something that's really fun too because you can utilize these fruits in different forms i mean freezing smoothies talk about how we can kind of diversify from just eating it whole oh well i mean you could use it as a garnish you can 
like you said, you could juice it. You could use it to emulsify. You could use it as flavoring. You could use it as coloring, right? You know, you thin it out a little bit. There's so many different uses. You could turn it into a dessert of some sort. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, you could cook with it. Like you could turn this into compote. I really wouldn't cook with melon, but you could cook with mango. Um, you could make skewers and different things with yeah. these. Obviously, we cook with cherries. You know, um, you know, even apple juice, you could reduce it, season it up, and use it for a glaze for food wow. or whatever. It's all about anything you could think of with this. You could do it. And we all know a pineapple is like the MacGyver of fruit. <laughs> we, we even use the outside as balls. Yeah. We use it for everything. Yeah. See, see, that right there is something that I'm loving to see because I, I've been seeing people do some frozen things or where they use a melon baller, yep. right? Scoop out the melon and then they use that as ice cubes in a, in a drink or something like a summer lemonade, right? So I've Oh, been, yeah, we do that right yeah, now. Right? We, we freeze the grapes. We put it in the lemonade. When we drink all the lemonade up, we be greedy and now we have grapes to eat <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. It, and it kind of balances it out right we had the lemonade now we got these good healthy grapes that have been sitting in the lemonade or you could do it with berries you could do it with all this stuff got some nice beautiful blueberries right here yeah. mm -hmm. well also too i mean we're talking about freezing things that for me i love a good sorbet that moves into how you can utilize a lot of these things for sorbet as well because the kids love that then they don't even realize they're getting all of the benefits of the fruit but now it's in this frozen treat that's like a new way of mm -hmm. them exploring the fruit as well right yeah a lot of times if uh, you give a kid something healthy and it's good and you don't relate it to health they're just gonna think they have a good treat they're not gonna really realize they're eating healthy yeah and, and you know because uh fruits often have the sweet property i love to be able to do different things with fruit and turn it into candy for the kids i mean the, like again you were talking about dried fruit when we talk about mangoes there's a lot of different things that you can dry necessarily let them sit out do a dehydration process on it now you kind of got like a fruit lather almost for the kids that's something a little bit more chewy right has an extra bite that's the original candy Mm -hmm. The original candy is using something that is a product of fruit, right? The first candies that came out were modeled after the flavors of fruit. The most popular candies are modeled after the flavors of fruit. That, that's just what it is. So, yeah, the idea of fruit being, you know, you able to use it in a diverse manner all the way up to being candy has been around for decades. Yeah. It's, it's, it's an old concept. Well, okay, you got the cutting board here. You've already sliced the orange. Some folks may be wondering, what are some of the best ways to get in some of these larger melons? Because I think a lot of us can have a different method of cutting. Maybe you can show us, you know, with maybe the watermelon, how, what is one of the, the most simplest methods for folks to just kind of get into it and have something really great to give out to kids? Okay, well, the most simple method where you could get it to the kids in an easy fashion you just cut it in half. Some people like to cut a little slice right here, right? This allows it mm. to not roll. Then you might cut the ends off. Some people just go, it doesn't really matter. There's no wrong or right way. I cut the ends off because you're not going to eat that. You got a trash somewhere to put this? Yeah, yeah. We'll grab the trash. For All right. Mm -hmm. And we go right down the middle. Right. So you could either, you could do this one or two ways or there's not not one or two ways. There's many ways. But the primary way right now, you could just go straight across where you eat the watermelon like that. Or you could cut it down the middle and you could get a triangle. So I'll cut down the middle. It's easier for me right now to rotate mm -hmm. because we're working with limited space. And you just do a nice clean cut. There's no need for you to do that. It's harder to do that, mm -hmm. to saw, than to just go straight through. Mm. And there it is. You got perfect slices. Oh, yes. You know what I'm saying? You know the middle is this always This is like a great the, one. Yeah. And you know we could give it another cut. Mm. Now we have. Mm. Well, tell us, you got to have a method for picking a great melon. 
I've heard people talk about thumping it. They got to hear that hollow sound. What do you do when you're out there shopping Man, to pick a great one like I'm this? This be, is a great one. I'm going to be so real with you, Trey Holiday. I like to deal with the brand, right? Because certain brands are more likely to be a good quality than other brands mm-hmm. like for watermelon. These smaller ones are really good or a Hermiston brand from Hermiston, Oregon. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> we could do the thumping. We could do all that stuff. Like to be honest, I think I was, I think I'm a little out of tune with that, but I do know that fruit that's a little bit more age, that's imperfect mm-hmm. that you see like this, this is stuff that is likely to be more sweet. A watermelon, a big one, that has like the brown patches, Mm -hmm. the dry, those usually are the ones that are a little bit better. So Mm -hmm. fruit is odd because some, even, even a pineapple, the good pineapples are the ones that you see that are like slightly brownish on the outside and you have a real strong pineapple smell. Like right now, this one, you don't Mm -hmm. see, this is like a fresh one, but if we were to let it sit a couple days, it would completely ripen up and it would be how we would want it. So yeah, as far as uh, picking the fruit, especially a watermelon, I kind of go with a brand I know. And if I'm not dealing with that, I look at the watermelon that has the kind of brown little areas, the off Mm. color spots, right? And just make sure you fill it. And if it's soft, you never you never want a soft watermelon. <laughs> right, right. Because it's not going to be right. Well, you know, this is, you're mentioning something that's so key when it comes to certain fruits, especially ones like melons, even mango. There's something that's really particular about when you cut into it. Because if you let it sit for a couple of days, like you said, then maybe you're going to get exactly what you want versus trying to rush the process of some of these fruits. Because- when they're in a their sweet pocket, yeah. you know, right? Because then they can go over too if you yep. let it sit for too long. Yep. It's no good. But if you get it in that sweet pocket, you got to understand like that's the time to cut open to it. This right here was a great time to cut it to the watermelon. Mm-hmm. I mean, you guys, I'm telling you, this is crisp. It is good. It's sweet. It's all the things you want out of a watermelon because I can't stand a mushy one, bro. Me neither. <laughs> Me neither. When, when, look, as soon as it, as soon as it happens, it's gone. Oh, yeah. Mm-mm. Yeah. Or the, you know, crazy discoloration. Like she said, this one right here is really good, but we caught it in the sweet pocket because you see it. Give this a few more days. It's gonna. It's not gonna be the quality it is now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it gets like too pink or something, and then it just becomes mush. Yeah, always death a pleasure. I mean, I'm over here. You guys, we're gonna jam on some fruit today. Oh yeah, we're gonna eat the fruit. Free- yeah, this this, this this is not for props. We <laughs> I'm I'm gonna cut the rest of this stuff up. And the Converse staff is really going to have fruit today. Oh, we appreciate you always, Def. I want you to have a moment here. Uh, which camera does he need to look? Okay, straight forward. Make sure. Okay, right here. Okay, there. that's a great one for you. Look right there. Let the folks know how they can get in touch with you, how they can connect. Uh, my name is Jermaine Miller. They call me Def Chef. My email is T-H-A-W-H-I-T-E-B-O-X-74, the white box 74 at Gmail. I'm on whatever social media platforms, really you could catch me in the community doing work. So if you have something going on that you need food justice involved in, holler at me for that because that's really what I'm looking to do with the community. Absolutely. And you're doing it with thank the community. You. We thank, thank you so you. much for being there and, and representing food justice the way you do, bro. You're everywhere. I don't thank know you. how thank you do you. it, but thank you so much for spending time with me on Always, Mondays. always. I love it. Yeah, you guys. I you look guys, forward to this, seeing you on Monday. This Mondays. is the exciting thing. Deb is now, you know, for a minute it was every other Monday. Deb was like, no, I'm coming every Monday. He got stuff for us every Monday. Mm-hmm. Thank you so much, yeah, brother. Yeah, make the time. Absolutely. Well, you-